my presentation uh, deals with uh, more, uh, let's say, mundane things. Uh, how to cope in, uh, in policy terms with uh, cultural heritage and sustainable tourism. And uh, as we know, Uh, we are experiencing dramatic changes in the past uh, 20, 30 years or so uh, in terms of the political changes, uh, the uh, opening up of markets, the uh, accessibility, improving accessibility to different places, and uh, that leads to an incredible amount of change, cultural change, economic change, and uh, in many other respective changes, uh, but also uh, it brings forward distant places which were not uh, uh, that accessible to, to the mass uh, population in the past, they become accessible. Therefore, we, uh, we are, uh, all this has changed the way we think, changed the way we deal with uh, problems, and uh, of course, that has brought up a lot of uh, issues that we all know about. That affects also the way we, uh, we tend to experience the places we want to visit. Tourism, as we know, is about pleasure. It's about, primarily about pleasure. It is about uh, satisfying our needs to uh, to get to know places, to educate ourselves, to have fun, to uh, undertake some activities that we think are important, and therefore uh, has, it has become one of the most dynamic uh, economic activities uh, globally. And nowadays, with technological and uh, all the other changes that are discussed, it has uh, affected everything practically in the place around the world. And there are changes in travel patterns, the new destinations have emerged, they have become accessible, and there are changes in the way we behave as tourists. In the past, it was uh, always a, a very, uh, in most cases, a well organized uh, way of going from one place to another. Uh, and I'm not talking about the distant past when we first uh, visited so we were the educated uh, uh, from the uh, Western European countries who wanted to get in touch with uh, Greek uh, culture and who were coming on an individual basis trying to st struggling to find uh, the roots, etc. But I'm talking about the recent past, which is in the 60s and 70s, with the advances in technology, and, uh, which affected transport, which affected also the organization of society with travel agencies and tour operators who organized transfers of people from one place to another. Now this is changing. We might be uh, still profit from these kind of systems, but we tend to be more individualistic. We are becoming more individualistic societies. So when we go to a place, we want, we might use uh, a cheap way of going, an airplane, but then when we arrive, we might follow different paths. We might go for gastronomy, we might go for uh, activities at sea, we might go for driving into uh, cultural heritage uh, uh, issues, uh, and, and also different kinds of aspects. So there is a uh, uh, an increasing individualization in terms of travel. That means also uh, uh, a tremendous change in the way society is organizing the support of this. I will not go into uh, the details of that, but uh, we tend to be uh, more individualistic and more flexible, let's say. Now, and more demanding also as society. Now, that affects tourism. Uh, tourism if we look at it from a, uh, from a distant perspective. Uh, tourism is a combination of activities, that you travel, you stay in a place, and also the activities that one undertakes, and then it provides 
opportunities for places to develop, but also it imposes a lot of, uh, uh, it creates problems eventually, it creates pressures. And uh, of course it has global green, but it's more social, economic, uh, uh, environmental, and uh, of course within the social, it could be cultural side. So what is what we have learned though so far is that tourism creates impact, but also such impacts affect tourism itself. Because the what matters is the experience of a place and the experience is not nice, that affects the the propensity of the people to go and visit the place in the end. So and there are a lot of places who have lost their tourism uh, attractiveness because of the problems that were created and which were not handled. Now, the impacts of tourism are diverse. I will, uh, it will be, uh, we have discussed it already uh, in terms of the natural and social environment. And uh, of course, if we add all of what we heard this morning about the, the uh, very interesting perspective that the way we, see, we value something changes over time and we tend to shift uh, our values sometimes from one perspective to another, that brings also a change in environment. So what does this, this mean in the end? That means that the, 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 since tourism is about the experience of a place, what matters is the quality, the quality of uh, the, what we call the environment, which is a multidimensional uh, the, I guess it's about that. So there is a lot of discussion about how to cope with problems of tourism. And of course, we know that the global perspective, the global context we refer to <coughs> is sustainability. Sustainability is, so, in a sense, balancing out social, economic, and uh, environmental uh, goals and trying to come up with uh, a, a combination which does one uh, activity does not affect the others in a uh, negative way. Essentially, tourism, therefore, is, has to be sought as within that context. So uh, there is no sustainable tourism, but only tourism within a strategy of sustainable development. And of course, that means integrating environmental policy, tourism policy, integrating cultural uh, uh, conservation and uh, uh, tourism policy, integrating economic uh, growth within the uh, tourism policy. And of course, what it means in practice is that we have to broaden our scope and integrate all kinds of uh, other aspects, social issues, etc. And since uh, we deal with people, we deal with societies, it's obvious that this is not a matter of a single. Uh, institution or a stakeholder, but we have to create platforms for um, uh, multi-stakeholder participation and governance systems. And uh, what does governance mean? Essentially, it's about processes that allow people to express their uh, values, their attitudes, their opinion, their perspectives, and uh, of course the uh, processes that eventually lead to some um, concerted action, some agreements about uh, how to do things, and of course an essential component is monitoring and evaluation. So more and more, having all this context in the back, tourism is about the places. It's about managing tourism, it's about uh, managing places, what we call destination management. And uh, the focus is there and the whole uh, idea is to try to build up the capacity of local systems, local societies, stakeholders, etc., to go and take advantage of tourism and uh, to pursue the economic, social and uh, environmental goals they have. So the emphasis is, of course, on maintaining the destination as something which is dynamic, and uh, the emphasis is on quality controls, managing flows of time and space, and of course the, the relation between uh, 
one is local and one is super local. One is important at the local level, vis-a-vis -vis one is also important as well at the super local level, national, international, global, etc. The main issues from a policy perspective is the organization capacity, the capacity of local systems to cope with disturbances, what was called resilience just a while ago, and the least the capacity of systems to cope with problems and uh, overcome these problems. And of course, in this context, planning, planning in the sense as a democratic uh, process that, that leads from the establishment of from uh, the establishment of goals to uh, the development of strategies and action. Uh, this is what planning is in this context, and the key role in a proactive uh, approach to do it by providing frameworks for managing such strategies. Now, what are the main questions and issues? First of all, is the political acceptability and the active role of local communities. We witness, at least in this country and many other countries as well, uh, that uh, it was mentioned already by the previous speaker that a lot of problems exist sometimes when you try to preserve a cultural uh, heritage site or you try to develop something which uh, uh, has an effect on the environment, society, and, uh, and culture. Uh, there is uh, an issue of both political acceptability. And this is something that has to be handled and uh, also coped with. Uh, second is the mobilization and the role of key stakeholders. That means the capacity to convince people and institutions and, uh, uh, and social groups that they have to come in and contribute with their own ideas and their own actions to come up with, uh, uh, with overcoming the issues and the problems and then uh, reach the objectives that uh, are set, the desired objectives. Then, the third thing is to build up mechanisms and uh, mechanisms of concerted action, that means for where people can come together and decide on, 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 on streamlining their actions, streamlining their goals, but also develop common goals and, and, and find synergies and complementarities. And of course, the, the last bit is to we still work in an institutional uh, uh, context, so we have to see what, uh, how we can use the legal and institutional context to uh, produce what we want. Now, planning for sustainable tourism is essentially uh, dealing, coping with impacts and coping with pressures. And uh, we need a comprehensive framework. We, we have uh, a variety of uh, tools that we can assess, uh, as it was already presented to us earlier today, vis a vis the uh, economic uh, dimension, but also the social dimension and also the environmental, which we know uh, that exists. The, the last bullet says about building up local capacity. And this is about, uh, this is about teaching local communities that they have to cope with problems. And this is not, it sounds obvious, but it's not uh, existing in many, many places. And uh, then, of course, what uh, planning that is a strategy, uh, a common strategy to apply is to preserve the public interest in whatever terms it is uh, used, but also the local, the supra-local, and the interaction between the two. It should be proactive because that's what planning is all about. It's about thinking about the future and what will happen and trying to come up with actions early enough to mitigate or enhance uh, those uh, uh, impacts. And of course, we have to consider the risks and uh, all the costs associated. And uh, of course, the planning is, uh, uh, is essentially building community support. That's what it is all about. Now, there are, in terms of tourism and cultural heritage, there are certain issues that come up very often. This is about capacity. Uh, what happens in places which become very successful 
and uh, they like Venice, like Acropolis, like many other places that have a flood of uh, interest, a flood of visitors, and then this flood creates pressures, and how you cope with them. And there are many ways that one can think. I will not dwell into the political capacity theory, but uh, the, uh, the, 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 the logic is to, the idea is to try to, to spread these pressures in time, if you can, spread them into uh, space, that means create opportunities uh, in a broader uh, context, and then try to, to, to mix impacts in the sense, trying to create other opportunities that are happening. And uh, if we think in these terms, there are, uh, we have to think uh, there are no global solutions. We have to think of the characteristics of, just of locality, in the sense, uh, because that is a major determinant of resilience. We have to think of the type of tourists that arrive, uh, that means the characteristics and the behavior and the expectations, the attitudes, and the expectations of tourists. Uh, because that's how we, we can deal with impact. And the third is to, to deal with the interface between tourism, cultural, social, and economic environment. And in a sense, I think always that tourism and uh, the context, uh, the environmental, social, and economic conditions affect each other uh, and the depend. Now, there are certain issues that, that have to be considered if you try to see the technical side. First of all, the spatial considerations. How far do we intervene? Uh, is it at the local level? Is it regional? Is it a native level? Is it urban? Uh, etc. Second is the role of actors. Third is trying to, to integrate tourism into a broader uh, strategy of development or of coping with growth. And last, of course, is evaluation and monitoring. And of course, there is a, a range of measures that we can use, and that have been extensively used in that. And uh, of course, uh, uh, various other kinds of uh, tools, so taxes, pricing, incentives, etc. Uh, visas for cities, as the Venice has invented, uh, and organizational types. So this is just a highlight of the spread of considerations and challenges that we have uh, in front of us if we want to cope 